Hey guys, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where I teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. And today I'm providing you guys with five free plugins that you can download for Premiere Pro. Now quick notice, these are plugins, not presets with transitions and stuff like that. Anyway, let's start with the first one, which is a tool for pre-production organization called Post Haste. Now, Post Haste can be downloaded from the website of Digital Rebellion and is completely free. Now, this plugin lets you organize your assets and folder structures for a simplified project organization. Now, once you've downloaded Post Haste, open it up and then go to the Templates tab. On the left side, I'm going to add a new template. Let's call it YouTube Video. A new template has been created. The right is still completely blank. We can now add folders and projects here. So in our case, we want the project name of our video. So let's click on add and select new folder. I'll rename it to project name. Then I select the folder and hit the add button again. Now I'm going to make a couple of extra folders for the structure that I normally work with. Once that's done, you'll notice that I have a project folder and a thumbnail folder. Now select the project folder, hit add again. And now I'm going to select a Premiere Pro CC project. Now from the thumbnail folder, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to create a Photoshop file since I make all of the thumbnails in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, now go back to the new project tab. Here we can create a new project. Now, of course, we have some default parameters here, which are nice if you're working with a client. So you get a nice overview of the project that you've already created thanks to the numbering. Now you can add which client the project is for. You can name the specific project and it will automatically add the date and the user who created it. Now this is a nice feature for when you're working with multiple people in the office. And if you want to change these parameters, then go to edit and then preferences. Here you can change the parameters, the project itself. For example, you can give a specific destination where all the projects need to be located and so on. Now once done, hit create project. You can now add the folder and I'm just going to add it to the desktop. If we now move to the desktop, we will see this new folder with all of the parameters as its name. If we open it up, we see our project and inside are all of our structured folders and in the project folder is already a Premiere Pro template project that we can now open up and get started with the editing of this client's video. Okay, now since we're inside Premiere now, let's move on to the next plugin, which is Saber Blade from FX Factory. Now here's an important notice though, FX Factory is only available for Mac users currently. So FX Factory, if you're watching this, please make your plugins available for Windows as well. It would be much appreciated. Now from their website, you can download the Saber Blade plugin, which has a free and a paid version. The free version is pretty decent, but has a bit less parameters that you can change, but you can still get a nice result with it. You can consider it the smaller and less advanced brother of the Video Copilot's Saber plugin for After Effects. Now once we've got it installed, we can use it in Premiere Pro to create cool lightsabers like in the Star Wars movies. They are available in three colors, which are green, blue and red. And you can simply animate the begin and ending of the saber to create a nice animation. The thickness and the glow can also be adjusted. Also on the FX Factory website are the blaster bolts and the Star Wars opening title generator and the space wipe transitions. So basically, if you have a Mac, you can create your own Star Wars movie with these free plugins. Moving on to the next plugin, which is Power Window from Creative Impatience. Now they have a whole bunch of other plugins as well for if you're using older versions of Premiere Pro where some assets aren't available yet. But for the newest version, I only recommend the Power Window plugin. Now this lets you create a complete customizable vignette. Now you can find this in the effects panel once downloaded. When applied to your clip, you can select the window type. And if you select the effect in the effect controls panel, you can actually see it on your program monitor. And you can use the different points to change values, like for example, its size, rotation, the feathering, and the intensity. Now from the effect controls panel, you can change the setting for everything inside or outside of the window. And you can also keyframe everything, so it's ideal for animations. Now if you open up the window controls, you can also set the alpha fall off. I like to set it to Gaussian to create a nice and subtle looking feather. Lastly, I have two audio plugins for you that can be downloaded from Adobe Exchange. Now you can access this by going to the window menu and selecting find extensions on Exchange. Now the plugins I'm talking about are AutoCut and Beat Marker. Now once downloaded, you can find them in the extensions tab under the window menu. Let's start off with AutoCut. Of course, I have a lot of spoken videos from all of the tutorials that I've created on this channel. And they often mess up while talking. Plugins for you that you can be download... Or leave a moment to breathe so I always need to cut those gaps out of my edit. 
but with AutoCut, it should be done immediately. Select your clip and head to the AutoCut panel. I recommend leaving the settings as default, but of course, you can change them if needed. Now, the settings of the third step, I do recommend changing. And the best part is that you can see a live preview of the parts that will be cut away. So with the arrows, you can navigate left or right in that preview. And when you think it looks all right, hit the cut icon and your audio will automatically be cut. It also makes a separate sequence with a backup file that isn't cut. Awesome! And last but not least, we have Beat Marker by Acusonis, a brand that we've already collaborated with in the past on the Cinecom channel. Now, once you've installed the Beat Marker plugin, you can find it in the extension tab. When you open it, you can get free music, but that doesn't really matter. We want to create markers to a song we're already using. So you can either import audio or use audio from inside your project. Just select your song and choose the amount of markers you want. There's always a max amount indicated. Now, why would you want to choose the amount of markers? Well, if you have a lot of beats in your song, you can choose to cut on every beat or make it less repetitive. Now, that way you also make the decision of creating a fast paced or slower paced video edit. Now, I'm going for a number of 100 markers and I'm going to hit the create markers button. In only a few seconds, all of the markers have been generated. You can always undo this action if you aren't pleased or need more or less markers. And if you now want to make an edit to this beat in no time, you can use the automated edit trick that I've talked about in a previous tutorial. So if you want to know how that works, click on the link in the top right corner over here. And those were my top five favorite plugins for Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoy them and will be using them in the future for your projects. I'll see you guys next week for a new tutorial. And as always, stay creative.